All right, in part two, we're going to slice open the top of the pumpkin and uh, add a stem to the top and uh, change the colors a little bit and carve a face out. So first step would be uh, we're going to create another surface to use to split these uh, split the top from the, the body of the pumpkin. So in order to do that, um, we first need to draw a surface. Um, so I'm going to go to the front plane and draw a sketch. And I'm just going to, from say the uh, center here, just move out a little bit, um, put another line up there. So we've got a center line here, or construction line, and an actual line. Um, I'm going to make this length something like three quarters of an inch and then set this angle to maybe 115 and of course we can play with these numbers later um, the important part is that the line goes all the way above the top of the pumpkin and far enough down into it that it's going to cut all the way through so got my sketch there actually we need to add something else to this put a vertical line here so we can revolve this and exit so we'll go to my surfaces tab and create a revolve surface and revolve around that so I also like to just double check to make sure the surface is going all the way through so we can use our section view for that and uh, I've already got the front plane selected here but if I click check I can just quickly verify that the surface is going all the way through the whole pumpkin here so um, turn off my section view um, the next step is actually to combine the solid bodies. So you can see if you have solid bodies uh, list, I've got eight of them. Um, because when I did the pattern, it actually just patterned each individual body, but it didn't combine those. Um, so if you have more than one solid body, it should show this folder. But in case it doesn't, um, you can right click on the actual main part and go to hide or show tree items. And then underneath solid bodies, you can change from automatic to show or hide. And that's the same for any of the items that kind of show up. Typically, they're set to uh, automatically show if they need to. But sometimes uh, you might want to always show that folder. Um, so we're going to go up to uh, insert features and then go down to combine. And it's going to ask us bodies to combine. I'm going to just press plus on the feature tree here and again for solid bodies and select the first one hold shift select the rest and uh, you can click show preview if you'd like that should just kind of show you the total combine and then we want to add them together we're not subtracting one from the, the other so leave it on add click check and now we have a single combine for our solid body um, if we didn't do that then we would get a bunch of individual slices um, anywhere from this surface to the inside of the top, they'd all be separate pieces, which we don't want. Um, so that combine is actually pretty important. So then we need to just use this surface to slice um, the, the pumpkin into two parts. So again, I'm going to go up to insert features and now split. And it's asking what my trim tool is. So I'll select, um, you know, you can either select the surface from the, the tree or just select it. And uh, target bodies, all bodies, and cut bodies. So what this does then is it creates the two separate bodies, but I need to name these and save them. So um, if I double click on one, it's going to bring up save as. And I can just name this, say, uh, I don't know, top save and now it shows the top here double click on this one and call this one maybe just main and save that so it hasn't actually saved them until we click the check but this is what they will be named so um, I'm gonna click the check here and it's gonna open up two new parts so um, if I minimize the main screen here, now I'm working with two separate pieces. 
I've got my top and I've got my body. So we can work with these separately now. Um, so I don't really need to do much more with this other than change the colors, which we will do later, but we will want to add the stem to the top. So that will be our next step. So if we're going to 3D print this, um, we'll probably want to make the stem a different color than the top. So we need to make the stem a different part so it can print uh, separately. So I will create a new part. And on the top plane, I'll create a polygon from the origin and make the width about maybe one inch wide. On my front plane, I'll create a new sketch and I'll create a spline that starts from the origin. And now I need to create a plane based on this spline. So I'll plane, select that endpoint, select the spline as my second reference, and I've got a plane now that's perpendicular to the end of the spline. On this plane, I will create another sketch of an additional polygon, and I'm going to start it from the center here and drag it out a little bit. That should be pretty good. Exit that sketch. Um, so the goal here is to loft this polygon down to the first one I drew and use the spline as a guide curve. But um, having the spline in the center here is probably not going to work. Um, we'll probably give you an error message. We need to do one from the, the outside. So um, on my front plane, I'll draw another sketch and I will create yet another spline that will come up and touch the outside of that polygon. And when I exit that sketch, I'm going to use a loft and I'm going to loft sketch number three to sketch number one and if it's twisted a little bit in a way you don't want you can always um, use these green points to try to change the way it's lofted so I'll deselect that and click on this point and we can you know make sure that it's going to the uh, most logical point um, so that's that's the loft, but it's not using this curve to generate it. So I'm going to select in the guide curve bo box and select that guide curve. And we can see now it's it's using that. So I'll click check. And here is the uh, general stem that I need. So now we need to create an assembly from the three parts we have. So we'll go up, uh, make sure that this file is saved first. Um, I name mine stem, name yours, whatever you'd like, and we're going to go new assembly. And we're first going to insert the main body of the pumpkin. Uh, the first part you drop into an assembly is fixed in space, and that is, uh, you can tell that by the F that's next to the name of the part. Um, what that means is if I try to move this at all, even though it's not mated to anything, um, it, it's not going to move. And if I need to move it, I can right click on it and click float. And now I can drag it around. The, the problem is if you're uh, editing parts in the context of an assembly or you're, you're mating parts together, something has to be fixed uh, in order to make that process uh, easy or, or make sure you're not going to have problems down the road. So that's why the first part you drop in is typically fixed. Um, the next part I'm going to put in is my top. And then the last part will be my stem. Now, if you have a bunch of parts to put in and you don't want to have to keep clicking the insert components button, I can click this little thumbtack, keep visible so that it won't go away every time I drop a single part in. So 
um, for my stem, if I click and drag it, you'll notice after I click, this window is still there. Of course, I don't need to add any more parts, so I'll click check, but that's what that keep visible thumbtack does. Um, so first we're going to mate the stem to the top, and then we'll mate those two pieces together to the main body. Um, I think the easiest way to mate the stem to the top would be to add a little center line to this top. So I'm going to open this part. And uh, if it's already open, you might just need to go ahead and uh, maximize it again. I'm going to, on my, let's say, front plane, I'll create a new sketch. And I will draw a center line from, say, this point just slightly above the, the top. And exit that sketch and save that. So if I go back into the context of my assembly, it's asking me there have been changes. Do I want to update it? And I'll say yes. And we can see that center line has now appeared. So I'm going to use that by clicking the mate button. And I'm going to select the bottom point of this spline in the center here. And then I'm going to select the top point here. And now you can see we've mated those together. So since these are separate parts, you don't want that um, to really come in contact here, but we will want to extend the bottom of the stem to the top surface so that we don't have any gaps in the part when we put it together. So to do that, um, actually I'm hit X there, I don't need to mean anything else. Um, I am going to select the bottom surface. Um, that shows me what part I need to edit, and I'll click Edit Part. And it's just telling me I need to save the assembly here. So I'm going to call this pumpkin assembly and click save. So I have um, editing the part. I'm going to create a new sketch on this surface here. And I'm just going to click convert entities to get all of the geometry from the uh, polygon. Um, exit the sketch. I'm going to extrude. And uh, what I actually want to do, I don't want to just blindly extrude down. I want to have the extrude stop at the top surface, all, all around the surface. So I'm going to extrude up to body, and then I'm going to select this top body. And you can sort of see the preview now of what that's going to look like. So I'll click check. And now I have a uh, stem that fits perfectly into the gaps of the top. So I exit editing the component. And if I really want to see what that looks like, I can minimize uh, the assembly and go into the stem. And I can look underneath and you can see it's going to fit every little nook and cranny um, so that we have a nice uh, stem that doesn't have any gaps between it and the top. So the next step is going to be to mate the uh, top and stem to the main portion of the body. So we'll go back to our assembly. And uh, you can see these still can be moved around. So I'm going to click Mate. I will select the outside edge of the top and the inside edge of where the top was cut from. And mate those together. And of course, since we've only added one mate, this can spin. And uh, one thing you can do is just select uh, a point here and maybe another point here and lock those on. So now it's uh, not going to spin. So when we 3D print the stem and the top uh, to actually attach them, I'm just going to use a little bit of super glue. Um, works really well on 3D printed parts. So um, that will be one quick, easy way to do it. The other thing you could do is potentially add a, a pin in the stem and a hole in the top and press fit them together. Um, but super glue is pretty easy, and you don't have to make any other uh, features in your parts. Um, so let's go ahead and start uh, applying colors to the individual parts here. So I can go to um, you know, right-click on one, one of the parts and click on Appearances. And then I can just select, say, green for that part. 
Um, we can do the same thing for the other two parts. So we're going to select an orange. And then let's go ahead and select the same orange for the body. So now that we've done all this work, let's save this. Save all. And now we can carve a face into the pumpkin. So we're going to edit the main portion and on to edit the part. And on the front plane, I'll create a sketch normal to the front plane. And uh, let's do a center line through the part just so that we have something to mirror across. We'll draw a triangle. And uh, then we will mirror this triangle across the center line. Then down here, we'll give him a nice smile. And let's give him a few teeth here, but not too many. And we can trim away the portions of the teeth we don't want. Get rid of all those so it's one part. Um, and of course, we can tweak this however we'd like um, down the road as well. So that will be my basic face. And I'm going to go ahead and exit the sketch. And then I'm going to extrude cut. Now, this is coming from the middle of the pumpkin here. So it doesn't really matter which way you go. Um, as long as you go through all. So I'm going to click through all. And now when I move out to the outside, I have my pumpkin face. I'll exit that component and you can see we've carved our pumpkin without getting messy.